I crave that primal feeling, but with one with nature. Like when I'm out there and I'm free, it's just me, the snow, the mountain, and everything comes together to just produce that freedom. I just crave it. These are the stories. My little girl, she's changing lives just by being herself. Of organizations and people making a difference. When you first tell someone about adaptive wheelchair boxing, it doesn't sound real. And empowering others. It saved my life. It saved my life. Across Canada. I scored my first goal in my first blind hockey game. In our community. When you walk around town, there's there's always certain scenarios where you're needing help. When I'm skiing in the backcountry, it feels like just a normal ski day. My name is Tyson, and I'm the founder of the Braille Mountain Initiative. In fall of 2018, I went from 20-20 vision in my right eye to almost no vision over the course of two weeks. In the summer of 2019, uh, the same thing happened to my left eye. I was told that, you know, the first six months would be very challenging. And I, I remember thinking, like, it's not just going to be the first six months. It's going to be the rest of my life. Prior to my own vision loss, I was a ski guide and avalanche professional. There weren't any um, backcountry skiing programs for blind athletes. There was kind of this impression of, you know, it being too logistically challenging or there was too much associated liability. I didn't really agree with that. If I wanted those opportunities to be available to others, then it's going to be a, a new project that I would have to start. The Braille Mountain Initiative is a nonprofit organization that I founded to get blind athletes involved in backcountry mountain sports. So we got Mark coming in from Vancouver to do some skiing. So get our gear ready to go here. We are really close to having our first trip go ahead. We've got almost all the pieces of the puzzle in place. So I'm really looking forward to getting out in the mountains with uh, other blind skiers. By removing the obstacles of people and the need for a traditional radio guide, backcountry skiing creates a new sense of freedom for blind skiers, something Mark has always dreamed of. Well, we're heading up to um, Invermere, which is uh, an amazing place to go backcountry skiing. And I uh, haven't been there, so I'm pretty excited to, to get out there and check it out. My name is Mark Benz, and I am the first participant of the Braille Mountain Initiative. I first lost my vision when I was nine, and it's a slow, progressive degenerative disease. I'm always controlled by something, be it someone trying to help me, my guide dog, my cane, my phone. Everything I use has to support what I'm looking for. Mark's early years revolved around resort skiing. As his vision started to deteriorate, he learned new techniques to keep up with his friends. They weren't going to just ski slow. They were going to ski as fast as they wanted to. So I became very skilled at downhill skiing. So when it came to competing with fellow blind people, I was phenomenal at it. I was only 16. And so we went to the Paralympics, and I won two gold medals. Resort skiing, uh, I love it, but uh, it definitely has its limitations because I have to wear a headset, high visibility uh, jackets, and you really have to take care to make sure that other people aren't going to ski into you. So it has a just a, a level of stress to it. Uh, it's taking the joy away. A large component of backcountry skiing is the hike up. Tyson will show Mark how to ascend the grueling elevation by using an adhesive material on the bottom of his skis known as skins. We put these on the bases of our skis. And it's a material that allows you to travel one direction on the sew surface, but not the other. So essentially, you walk uphill, and it prevents you from sliding back down. The resort is always going to have this variable hazard of other skiers, but we can take that entirely out of the picture in the backcountry. I can ski independently and freely and forget about my visual impairment, just ski like a regular skier. Ski 
skiing in the powder takes away a level of isolation that is so oppressive and just letting it go and soaring like an eagle. And I didn't like birds, but I just love and I crave the sensation of flight. To be like visual again, to actually go, you know what? It doesn't matter if I close my eyes. I'm just as sighted as the next person. It gives me, I mean, I got goosebumps just, just thinking about that moment because I've been thinking about it for decades. I can very clearly remember the moment where I skied, maybe it was only 20 meters, but I skied 20 meters for the first time as a blind skier that didn't feel like I was skiing as a blind skier. It means everything to be able to get in the backcountry because before this, you wouldn't even think about it. I've asked so many people to take me there and it just has never become a reality. So by doing this, we set a new standard for blind people. Hey, Mark. Tyson, awesome. Come on out, Mindy. There you go. Great to meet you, man. Great to meet you. Been a long time here. This is Harry here. He's one of our guides. Hey. Harry, nice great. To Mark, Maddie. Nice to meet you, Matty. Yeah, likewise. I'm Matt Chesser. I met Tyson about 12 years ago. Uh, we were actually both working for the same cat ski company. I'm in a guiding capacity tomorrow. I'm the eyes. Well, first thing we got to do before we head out skiing tomorrow is we got to get you through some avalanche rescue training. Oh, uh, looking forward to that. All right, cool, man. Let's do it. All right. Okay. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. Mark and Tyson are at the base of Paradise Basin. Due to the high risk of avalanches, Tyson must show Mark how to locate a buried person using a transceiver blind. When you're blind, you don't, you gotta be places to figure it out, and I've never been in the backcountry. So just a little nervous, avalanches, that type of thing. The first thing we got to do here is teach you about the transceiver. This is an essential component in companion rescue, and you got to wear this at all times when you're in the backcountry. Okay. Do you feel those two buttons on the one. top of the transceiver? Oh, yeah, one's bigger, one's smaller. Gotcha. Exactly. Yeah. So to put it into search mode, you're going to push down both of those buttons yeah. and then slide it all the way over to the right, and your transceiver should start making some noise. Your transceiver will receive a signal once per second coming from the transceiver that your partner is wearing that we're going to be searching for in the event of an avalanche. Okay, good. There's a lot that goes into managing these various mountain hazards. What changes in the weather have done to the snowpack, looking at what terrain is going to be safe to ski, and then trying to put all those pieces of the puzzle together. Just the, the complexity of it is something I really enjoy. Before we go any further with our transceivers, uh, we got to talk a little bit about what we do if we're involved in an avalanche. You might hear a whomping sound. That's the sound of the snowpack collapsing. And then you'll feel the snow around you start to move downhill. So if that happens to you, what I want you to do is try and ski out of it at a 45. You want to treat it kind of like white water. You want to try and swim. Do whatever you can to try and tread water and stay on the surface. And as you feel that snow stop moving, try and thrust a hand up to the surface. That'll give something that'll be easy for the searchers to find. For our scenario here, let's say there's been an avalanche, someone's been involved, we don't have a last scene point. It's just me and you, so we've got to begin searching from here. The default search mode with these transceivers is a digital search mode that uses visual cues on the screen. We can't use that. We have to rely on the sound. So we actually have to use an alternative search mode that's built into these transceivers. There's a button on the right-hand side. You push with your thumb. And now we are in a search mode that is accessible to us as blind people. To be honest, it's kind of scary because it really gave me that sort of real-life chill that, uh, you know, things can happen, and they happen quickly. So now it's your chance to get a go with that transceiver. Great. So you've got it oriented the right way in your hand. You can feel that button on the bottom there. Yep. OK, perfect, man. Have at her. OK, down, down. There we go. OK, you're ready to start searching. OK. Yeah, cool. Now try your left and your right. Oh, yeah, that oh, immediately yeah. got louder. Yeah, there we go. Whoa. Oh, we're deep. Oh, we're into it. Okay, so think about what that volume's doing now. It sounds like it just got a bit louder. Okay, now get the transceiver nice and low to the surface of the snow. Okay. And then one more time. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, I think little Johnny's here. All right, if that's the loudest volume you can find, let's get that probe out. A search probe is similar to a tent pole in both assembly and size. It allows a survivor to penetrate the snow to find a buried person. Now you hold it by the loop. Yep. Throw the rest of it out. Now, with your left hand, hold on to the shaft of it. With your right hand, pull on that loop. And give it a bit of a shake as you're doing that. Keep shaking, keep pulling. It'll click into place. OK, I think we are. I think you got her. I think you're locked in. OK, right. cool, man. You ready to do some probing? Let's do it. If it was a really deep snowpack with a lot of avalanche debris, yeah. you'd be kind of hand over hand forcing all three meters of it into the snow. Oh, yeah. man. Oh. So I think you got her there. That's our Tupperware container. It's so like we talked oh, about in Johnny, real life. I made it. We're not looking for a Tupperware container. We're looking for, you know, a full person buried under the snowpack. Is there a sandwich in here? There is not. Oh. Avalanche training made me scared. It really gave you a dose of reality and, and what can happen out there. So yeah, definitely got my attention. Tomorrow we are going skiing in the Purcells in high alpine terrain. The snow surface can be very variable due to the winds. We've got an incredible amount of elevation to work with. I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun for both me and Mark. I think it's going to be great skiing tomorrow. Before the sun rises, Mark, Tyson, and the guides will snowmobile to the edge of the tree line at 7,700 feet of elevation. They will then apply their skins to the bottom of their skis and begin the grueling ascent to the ridge of Paradise Basin. I think everybody needs something to, uh, to look forward to, something to be excited about. And that's really what it's about, is providing that, that sense of achievement you get of hiking the lines that you ski. You know, I'm definitely a little more nervous now. You know, all these skidoos, we got to sort of do this special way of getting up the mountain and then getting up there in the dark. Yeah, there's a few things on my mind, but uh, super pumped. Finally here. I think all the pieces of the puzzle are in place, and it's going to be a great day. We've got about 45 minutes to the ridge on snowmobiles in the dark. We we're going to put skins on at tree line, and then try and skin up and be on the ridge somewhere around sunrise. So uh, right. let's do it. Right on. Good. Yeah, buddy. Sweet. Let's do it. It's dark, it's just the, the energy's in the air and people are super pumped. So yeah, getting up there and just uh, letting go when we get off the top there, it's a good feeling. I'm looking forward to getting Mark into some big alpine terrain, an opportunity to just let him ski freely and independently in the way that, that I enjoy skiing in the backcountry. The first few turns are gonna be unbelievable because it's gonna be like, yes, it's, it's happening. All right. Yeah, buddy. Nice work, gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. Right on. OK, so uh, we're at tree line here, and we can put skins on and get skiing. Yep, yep. It's better than I thought. It's just, yeah, it makes you tingle. So Mark, directly behind you, there's a small cabin of that dark thing. Yeah, yeah. That'd be the cabin. And then if you look directly across, oh. The lights are dim anyway, but I know that if you're looking across the valley, you can see kind of a big rocky alpine peak with some avalanche terrain in it. Oh, that's what this big white thing is. Yeah, you bet, man. God, it looks like it's about 10 feet away. It's way over there. Yeah, it's on the other side of the valley. Oh, OK, good. How about that? That's a snowball, is it? That's the mountain. Yeah, so kind of like the skiing that we're going to do is kind of up in this direction here. The urban boy that I am in the city is definitely out here. It's uh, it's just awesome. Like, it's just, yeah. Yeah, dude, it's going to be sweet. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be sweet. The final push will be an uphill grind of 14 kilometers, gaining 1,500 feet of elevation. OK, Mark, so this is going to be a little tricky for you. Yeah. Let's grab both your poles. OK. And then what we've got to do, we've got to get your bindings on. But there's no toe stop on these older styles. So if you want to spin around, 180 degrees, yep. And then your right foot is going to go into this binding first. So I'm going to have to help guide you here a little bit. So if you just relax and down on the outs left and forward a little. Um, let's go forward. OK, let's try that. Press down on the toe. There we go. OK, so now 
This binding is in tour mode. We'll just lock that on. Okay. And so you can stand on that foot. Okay. And now you've got to do your right, your, your right foot. The most challenging part, I think, will probably be the endurance. But to think it's actually happening, like to actually have a dream turn into a reality, it, it's, it, it, it's mind-blowing. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. As Mark, Tyson, and the guides make the final push to the top of Paradise Basin, conditions become difficult as the snow quickly turns to ice. Yeah, I'll do anything, but I also sort of go, whoa, man, like, what's next here? This is, this is challenging. How you making it out, Mark? Getting her done. Nice, man. You doing really well, bro? It's just nerves, right? You're just thinking, OK, man, I've got to get this done. Often I hold my uphill pole lower, as low as I can, and I hold my downhill one kind of on the top of the very grip, if that's making any sense. If you can keep your uphill hand below your heart, it stays warmer. Slip a little bit and you're nervous, because you, I mean, I can't see, but I, mean, I certainly can't see anything in the dark. For me, when the lighting is just right, like when the sun comes out, I can sometimes see the sun hitting the edge of the skin track. Yeah. A little bit in front of me. I don't know if that's going to be the case for you, but if it's not, what I like to think about is feeling the edge of the skin track with my uphill ski. And you can just kind of lightly bump the tip of your ski off of it. A significant windstorm has created slippery conditions on the steep incline. So boys, I'm really just leaning into my inside up uphill edge here. Where it's a little stiff. I think this top pitch here, Mark, might remind you a little bit of your ski racing days. Oh, yeah. Hard and fast. That's it. Boys, we are almost there, literally. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we're very close. Five minutes. This is this is very challenging skinning conditions. We're pretty much there now. <laughs> Yeah, dude, this is ski mountaineering. You're doing it. Yeah, yeah. Ow! Ah! Woo! Mission accomplished. Woo! Yeah. 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 Where to go? Nice. Where to go, Tyson? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, oh yeah. Paradise Ridge. Yeah, what a man. spot. What a spot. So right now we're standing on top of Paradise Ridge. Uh, the top here is about eight and a half thousand feet. Um, this is where we'll start our first run from. Is that the sun coming up there? Yes, yeah, so the sun's actually kind of rising to the south there. Yeah. That's kind of more of a, a north-northwest uh, facing view. It seems bright over there. Um, yeah, so I, I think what's happening, because I see that too, it's definitely brighter over there. I think it's the sun kind of just shining on the cloud and the open alpine slopes over there. Yeah. There's a lot of work involved to go from you know, essentially no opportunities for the blind to ski in the backcountry. And, uh, and myself and Mark standing on the top here, ready to ski our first run together. This is, uh, this is as close as I'm getting to Everest, uh, uh, top of Everest, I think. This is my Everest right here. Oh my God, it's hit something else. So boys, Paradise Ridge. And what we're looking at here, we've got uh, to your kind of 11 o'clock. Six o'clock to you, Tyson, right behind you, as you know, we've got Mount Nelson. It's a pretty beautiful peak beyond that. Farnham Creek is beyond that one. And then if you keep going, it's actually the much, much famed kind of Farnham Glacier Jumbo region that's been in the news a bunch in recent years. Oh. Yeah, nice. so uh, where we're going to go, we're going to go down to our three o'clock down beneath us. And a little bit, the wind has ravaged this ridge a little bit. Do you remember the snow we're walking through lower down? Yeah. We're going to get into that nice skiing in the, in the protected <laughs> That's good. gully. That's <laughs> Yeah. Without the ski resort obstacles and noises, Mark and Tyson will be able to follow their guides just by listening to their skis in the snow. I am pumped. Like, I, I, it's hard to believe we're now here. I just have to feel it enjoy it, and just love the moment. Should we do some skiing? Oh, yeah. That's what we're here for. All right. Yeah, yeah. Ah! Whoa. Whoa. 
Some nasty stuff up here. In the wind burnt snow, Mark struggles to hold an edge. I mean, there's nothing to hit here. It's just speed humpy, right? Nice, man. <laughs> you know, a couple tumbles, and uh, we got used to that uh, that uh, depth of snow. All good. Put together a few turns, and it was starting to feel good. Looking better. Looking better. As the skiers get closer to the protected gully, they start to hit fresh powder. It felt like that flying. Kind of like an eagle, you know, you fly, but you you got a bit of a pounce, so you kind of feel like a like a panther or a, let's say a mountain lion. You get that, you're very agile and fluid, and and it's a, it's a beautiful feeling to have that two things come together. I mean, this is what we've been working towards for the last ten months, creating those opportunities for other bind athletes to participate in the sport, and so. I mean, this is it. This is this is what Braille Mountain Initiative is all about, and we're we're doing it here today for the first time. I feel that level of freedom that I've only felt a few times in my life, where you just go off the top, and suddenly you're just surrounded by that pillowy snow, and you're you're you have a moment that very rarely gets repeated. You know, getting an opportunity to share what I love about the mountains and, and share the, the freedom independence it gives me. Um, sharing that with another blind person is a really amazing experience. Yeah, buddy. Yo, dude. It's not right. bad, man, Oh, eh? yeah. Oh, yeah. That low part's nice. We did it. Yeah, it's beautiful. There you go, Just man. It's beautiful. Blind backcountry skiing. It started. Yeah, buddy. It almost pays to be blind. Because <laughs> I don't know if I'd be doing this if I wasn't blind. It's sort of like, what a gift. There's, there's always something bigger, better to look forward to. And, and, uh, and I think that's something that um, blind athletes need to have on the horizon for them, right? They need to know that these opportunities are out there and there is another challenge available. You know, it, it just, it doesn't stop where you think it might. Producer Pamela Tomlinson. Narrator Jim Van Horn. Director of Photography, Dion Nell. Story Editor, Connie Edwards. Sound Mix, Tyler Gillis. Special thanks, Tyson Reddy and Mark Bentz. Thanks to Toby Creek Adventures and the Braille Mountain Initiative. Integrated Describe Video Specialist, M. Williams. Graphics, Andrew Antonello. Content Development Specialist, Sylvie Fiquette. Coordinating Producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director of Production, Karen I. Copyright 2021 Accessible Media, Inc.